Today, I'll be covering building a profit and loss financial model in Excel using the top-down method. Hi hey everyone, my name is Luciano Perdomo and welcome to the Burden Group YouTube channel, a channel dedicated to helping small business owners and entrepreneurs. Okay, so what are we gonna cover today? Well, firstly, we're gonna go through the formatting of a financial model. Then we'll go through the actual nuts and bolts of building a model. So understanding the calculations and formulas and how to build those out. And lastly, we'll go through some Excel shortcuts um, that can be used to save time and make your life a little bit easier. So let's ask ourselves an overarching question. What is a financial model? Simply put, a financial model is a forecast of a business's performance over a period of time, let's call it five years. Um, and this could be a forecast of um, a number of things. It could be sales, it could be cost, it could be labor, rent, what have you, right? So more importantly, you know, in the topic of this video, what is a top-down financial model? What does that mean? Well, top-down essentially means you're taking the entire market value. Let's say the entire market value of the coffee business, which as it stands today uh, is $47 billion, right? And in a top-down method, we're saying, well, we're going to capture 1% of this $47 billion market uh, in five years. So that is an example of a top-down. You're essentially going from the very top, this very large market value, and working your way down, right, to how that relates to your specific business, in this case being a coffee shop. All right, well, without further ado, let's get into building a top-down financial model and make you a better, more, more well-rounded entrepreneur who knows how to build a top-down model in Excel. <music> Hi everyone, so building off of our previous uh, segment of the video, building out a bottom-up pro forma model from scratch, we're now going to move into building a top-down model from scratch, utilizing the same format um, and uh, same modeling techniques in terms of shortcuts and formula build-out. So for those of you that didn't watch the previous segment or wanted to skip to watching this top-down segment, um, there's some common and customary modeling themes across the board. So one of those being having input cells or hard-coded assumptions in blue, okay? And the output cells or calculations are in black, like you see here. So this cell for the start year of the model is referencing the assumptions panel here, and then being grown by one to represent, you know, one year and passing year over year, okay? And so secondly, you wanna provide some comments if you can or notes in Excel of where you got your data from. This is especially important in a top-down model being that this is driven more so by market data. Um, so this market data being the total market size, the market CAGR or you know average year over year growth of the market size. And then we have some of our internal assumptions to, you know, for market share, we believe we're going to capture the increase in that market share year over year. And then again, we have some more market specific data or industry specific data, um, you know, pulled from IBIS world or whatever database or research you have access to for things like gross margin and then our fixed expenses such as labor, annual rent and SGNA. And then we have our general kind of tax assumption. So that's enough covering the formatting of assumptions. Next, we want to talk about the formatting of the actual P&L or model itself. Again, we want to focus on using um, US GAAP standard accounting terms. So revenue or sales, cost of goods sold, gross profit, um, operating expenses, EBIT or operating income. These are all standard GAAP terms that um, any investor, accountant, or reader of the model would, would understand um, on a universal basis. So whether they're here in the U.S. or somewhere else in the world. Okay, 
So enough about general formatting. Let's get into the nuts and bolts of building a model and, and, and go from there. So the very first thing we want to look at uh, is referencing our base market size. Okay. And the next thing we want to look at is referencing our market uh, our market share. Okay. So now we're saying here in this assumptions panel that we're growing our market size by 1.9% year over year. Okay, well, let's do that here in the model. How do we do that? So we come here, we're saying, okay, we'll take this first this first year, right, at 47.1 billion, and we want to grow it by 1.9% year over year. All right, I'm just going to leave it as is and do that. All right, well, if it should be growing at that rate, why isn't it changing? Well, here's what's going on. All right, because cell C7 isn't anchored, and anchoring is a technique we use to lock a cell in place so that it stays there and doesn't carry over like you've seen in this formula, because right now what's happening is, well, this column here, this cell here is capturing this 1.9 growth rate, but the next cell over isn't capturing that 1.9. It's flowing over. Excel is recognizing a pattern. And so you have to put kind of like a stop gap so Excel doesn't recognize that. And you do that by telling it to anchor. And so what we want to do is we want to anchor cell C7, both the row and the column. Okay. And now this works. So we have 47.1, then we go to 47.9. That compounds and then goes to 48.9. That compounds and goes to 49.8, and so on and so forth. And similar to what we did here above, we're, gr we're going to be growing our market share by a rate. And we want to make sure that, you know, by half a percent, we want to make sure that we anchor that as well. And there we go. Okay. So now we have a base to which build off of our revenue. We have the numbers we need. We have our total market size. We've grown that market size, you know, uh, based on the cake or provided by our, by our market research. And then we've assumed some level of market share. And additionally, we've assumed some sort of growth in that market share over time. Okay. So this is a very simple equation. We're going to multiply our market size our total market size for our market share. And lo and behold, we have our baseline revenue assumption. Now, unlike in the top down or unlike in the bottom up where, you know, I had kind of a direct reference or data point for, you know, cost per cup for a coffee shop, we're going to have to back into that. So we're now saying, okay, well, we're going to have an assumed gross margin percentage. We're saying we're going to make 42% margin. Okay, so again, I want to anchor this cell here, okay, because I don't want it moving down or away or, you know, breaking the model. So I'm going to anchor both the row and the column, and I'm going to multiply it by our revenue. That's our gross margin or a gross profit. Well, well, hold on. I need I have this blank here. I need to fill in our cost of goods sold. Well, that's easy. You just cost of goods sold is the difference between our revenue and our gross profit, and we can back into it. And just to do a sanity check, those numbers match. Okay, so that looks good. All right, next, you know, we want to be able to provide year over year an apples to apples comparison of our profitability. Because right now, there really isn't an apples to apples comparison, and that's good because it shows that you have, you know, your your revenue is growing, subsequently your profit is going, but let's look at it apples to apples and make sure that this is working linearly as it should and growing linearly as it should. And it is. So when I mean lin linearly, it means that the margin stays the same, okay, because revenue and costs are growing at the same rate. They're growing in line with each other, okay? And that makes sense because we use 42% as our assumption for the margin, okay, or 42.4% to be exact, 
Okay, and we've carried that over year over year. So that means the model's working. Next, I'm going to show you a neat trick real quick to be able to very quickly model all these cells across these three different variables that are associated with them, right, on a percentage of sales basis. So we're going to take our revenue figure, all right, and we're going to anchor it, but we're only going to anchor the row because we want to be able to move across columns, but don't want to move um, down rows. And then we want to anchor, all right, the assumption that we're looking at, but we only want to anchor the column, okay, because we want to move down, we want to move down rows, right? So for labor, 14%, for annual rent, 3%, and for SG&A, 9% of sales. Voila. You see how quickly that was done? And by the way, this, this was done quickly by selecting all the cells, anchoring them, and pressing Control Enter. It's a very neat trick instead of having to do it, start the formula in one cell and then drag, you know, copy and then drag and then paste. It's a very quick, saves maybe a second or two, but that adds up over time when you're building a whole entire model. Now, one thing we want to do is, you know, like we did here, we want to do a sanity check. We want to make sure that this works. So the way we do this is by taking the terminal year here and looking at it as a percentage of sales. So we want to lock, lock in or anchor this cell here. And there we go. And so far, let's look at this in a percentage format. This matches, but let's make sure that we're matching exactly. And we are. So that looks good. There's no delta or variance, so this looks great. It matches. Next, we're going to sum up our total expenses. And we want to look at our EBIT, or earnings before tax. And some people just call it operating income. You could coin it whatever you want to coin it, but we'll call it EBIT. All right. So... Here's what you have in terms of your EBIT. And again, we want to do an apples to apples comparison year over year, right? Just like we did with our gross profit. And again, we are going to look at this on a percentage of revenue basis. Okay, and this should be consistent because we're growing linearly, right? We're keeping the same level of gross profit year over year. We're keeping the same level of cost or fixed, fixed expenses at percentage of revenues year over year. And we want to look at our tax. Okay, so we're going to keep, uh, we're going to go off of our EBIT, and then we're going to anchor our tax figure. There we go. And now we can back into our net income, and you can understand what you get to take home. Okay, so this is our net income. And now we want to look at our net income margin, or net income as a percentage of sales. And again, that should grow linearly and stay the same because nothing is changing in terms of cost as a percentage of sales. The revenue growth isn't changing from year to year. Um, so it's, it's consistent. It's growing linearly. Okay. So now this completes our, our model for the top-down approach. But if you saw the previous segment when I was doing the bottom-up, you know, you'll notice that the numbers were a lot lower, and let's reference that real quick. So here we're looking at terminal year revenue numbers of roughly, you know, 1.5 billion, whereas here we're looking at 1 million, roughly, just a little bit more. So one thing to understand is that the top-down approach is very aggressive and can be perceived as overly optimistic, right? And typically you do this if you don't have a very good understanding of your market, you know, perhaps you don't even know where you want to start your coffee shop. Um, you just know you want to, do, you want to start a coffee shop, right? Um, and so keep in mind that even telling an investor, oh, I'm going to capture just 1% of the market, 1% is a lot. You know, and so in order to normalize this and bring it to the levels of the bottom-up model, this number has to be much, much smaller, right? 
So, you know, and even here, it's still aggressive because we're, we're growing our market share. And so perhaps it would make sense if we change this. It's getting a little bit more realistic. And that's a lot more easy to digest. So we're basically saying, well, you know, we're growing at point, you know, we're starting with a basis of 0 0.000, you know, 1% and growing by 0.001%. So you have to use very small numbers. So again, even just saying 1% and half a percent, that's a lot. So just keep that in mind. So this concludes uh, my segment on the top-down approach. Um, you know, just keep in mind, keep consistent formatting in your models. So make sure that your assumptions or inputs for the model are hard-coded and in blue. Any calculations or anything referencing or involving a formula is in black. Um, make sure that you using U.S. GAAP accounting terminology. And remember to use shortcuts and save time where you can, uh, whether it's using the anchoring method, whether it's doing the control enter method I've shown you. Um, just make sure that you're, and also make sure that you are uh, doing sanity checks on your model as you go. All right, thank you so much. And uh, you know, please feel free to like and subscribe to my channel. It would mean the world to me if you did. Goodbye. Thank you.